Hey, it's me, MLB. Here is Chapter 46 of Chance Ball, and this one is titled, Darby Gets a Job. Well, that scared me, he said softly, showing his vulnerable side again. Why? You were really sick. Yeah, but I wasn't going to die, he replied. I never want anything to ever get to that point again, okay? You're not even allowed to get a cold. It's not good for my health. You chuckled sympathetically. Okay, got it, he said with a smile. When Darby had gone to get food, the doctor came to visit and explained that you had gotten an infection from the open wound, the piercing, and that it would be advisable to not put the piercing back in. Okay, he replied, feeling a little annoyed that you'd only be able to have one piercing in and not both. Also, the doctor said gently, when we were examining you, the nurse and I did also notice a bite mark on your ribcage. If you have any concerns for your safety. A bite mark? he asked. What but Oh! Suddenly you remembered Darby's overzealous munch into your side during your lovemaking, and you quickly covered your mouth with your hand with embarrassment. Uh, um, yeah, um, no, it's fine. Just ignore that. I'm fine. I'm not being abused. That mark was made during, uh, yeah, best not to say. The doctor understood immediately and nodded. I see. I have a duty of care to check on patients with marks, so... It's fine, he replied dismissively. Thank you for checking in, but I promise you I'm in very good hands. Mmm, he hummed as he turned to go. I'm glad to hear. As he left the room, Darby came back in with some dinner for you. Hey, <laughs> abuse daddy, you chuckled. The hell, he asked. What the hell's happening then? The doctor thought you were abusing me because of the bite mark on my side, you chuckled. Oh crap, forgot about that, he laughed. <laughs> what fun I had during that process too. Shut up. He smirked, accepting the food from him. You were discharged late Sunday afternoon and told to continue your antibiotics for the next 10 days. Good thing you got a tat, Darby said as he let you into the house that afternoon. At least you have something that isn't going to get infected. Did you end up with anything from that night? Your piercings are okay? You asked, gesturing to his pants. Yep, I have a dick of steel and an immune system to match, he replied proudly, following you into the lounge room. I made sure to clean mine properly. Ugh, way to have a go at me, he replied sullenly. I think it's because it started bleeding. It might have been fine if the skin didn't rip a bit. I still have one other one, Darby said encouragingly, as he flopped down beside you on the lounge. It's hot to have one on one side and not on the other. It's like having a party tit. I know what you're trying to do, he said with a chuckle as he hugged him. You're trying to make me feel better about the situation. And it's working. I was trying to get you excited for round two, he leered, grabbing around your back and dragging you onto his lap. Is it working? He pressed his lips to your ear and breathed gently into it. You squealed and pulled away, trying to get off his lap, but he held you fast. No, you need to get a job. Have you done that, flyer? No, I was attending my ailing girlfriend in hospital, he replied, his fingers giving out and allowing you to scramble away. Well, you need to do it. We have college tomorrow, so you can put it up on the board, he said, getting up and walking out into the study. What were you wanting on the flyer? I don't know, he called. I don't want to teach private tuition. Well, I was going to help you, but if you don't know what you want, then I can't put anything on the flyer now, can I? He replied. I already wrote your resume up and ended up getting the job instead of you, so maybe I should just let you do this one on your own. I'll ask around as a cleaner or something, Darby said, pulling himself up on his feet and walking into the kitchen. Let's have dinner though, I'm starving. That next week was just working in college for you. Darby hadn't really put a lot of effort into finding a job, but on the days that you were working, he stayed back to practice. It was on Thursday night that he was practicing serving in the college gym that someone snuck in through the side door and watched him. It didn't take long for the watcher to see that Darby knew what he was doing and approached the scarred male after about 10 minutes of observing. You have a good arm, the older male called to Darby. Your man stopped and looked over at the aged man, eyeing him as he approached. My name is Tonkata, the man said, extending his hand to shake Darby's. I oversee the local girls' volleyball team in this prefecture. Darby reached out and shook the man's hand in return. And what are you doing in here then? Darby asked suspiciously. Scouting for potential teachers, he replied with a smirk. The girls are far more likely to listen to you young men than me. Clever, Darby replied with an amused smirk. What's your name? Tonkata asked. Darby, your man replied. You been playing long, Darby? Played all through high school, Darby replied flicking the ball up onto the tip of his finger and spinning it there. Which high school did you attend? Tonkata asked. Nakoma, Darby replied. Ah, good old Nekomara, Tonkata said with a knowing chuckle. Known the man my whole life. Oh, is that so? Darby replied. Well, 
Now that we have a connection, let's talk. Tom Carter grinned. How would you like a job co-coaching my team? Mm, sounds good to me. What's the pay like and how often would you need me? Darby asked, taking the ball off his finger and tucking it back under his arm. Ah, a man who talks business straight up, Don Carter mused with a smirk. Well, I was the captain of the Nakoma team. I usually make the orders, not take them. I like you, Darby. Let's say 25 an hour for around two hours a night. Don Carter crossed his arms across his chest and grinned at Darby. Make it 27 and we have a deal, Darby replied, putting his hand out to shake on it. I like your straightforwardness, Don Carter nodded with an impressed look on his face. I don't need a pushover for my girls. I need someone who will keep them in line. He reached out and shook Darby's hand in a firm handshake. I have another mouth to feed, and she's the only one I care about, Darby replied. I'll keep your kids in line for you. Appreciated, Don Carter replied. Come to the local hall tomorrow night to meet the team. The girls range from 14 to 18 years of age. All have a lot of potential, but just need some pointers, he said. I'll have them on top side in no time, Darby replied. I have no doubts, Don Carter grinned. See you tomorrow, Darby. Thank you, Tom Carter. See you tomorrow. Darby replied, smirking to himself as he finished up practice for the night and prepared to come and pick you up from your shift. Hey, he greeted you with a tongue kiss as you hopped into the car later that night. How was work? Uneventful, he replied with a shrug. Well, I got a job. Darby smirked at you as he put the car in reverse. You won? But you didn't even advertise or anything. What job is it? Volleyball coach, he replied with a grin. You bastard, you took my dream job, you seethed playfully. No, your dream job was to bend over and let me do you all day and night. This is for coaching a girls team. A whole team, you whined. That's so not fair. And all girls, they're going to be all over you like a rash. I'm going to have to turn up and make my presence known. They're freaking kids. I should probably take some nappies with me to hand out. He pulled into the driveway and parked the car. You grinned. Okay, well, the younger the better. I'm only into girls with one nipple piercing anyway, he said in a low voice, grabbing you around the waist and pulling you towards himself over the centre console. That's very specific, you replied, arching your back and tilting your head away as his chapped lips and teeth came in contact with your neck. It's supposed to be specific, because I'm only into you, he whispered against your neck. The following night, Darby went to the hall and you went to work, promising him that you'd definitely catch up after work to hear how his first night of training went with the team. He strolled up to the hall doors and pushed one open, slipping inside and standing off to one side as Tonkata coached the girls. On my way! Keep your hands up! The older coach barked at one of the smaller girls on the team. Yes, sir, she called back, keeping her hands up in preparation for the ball to come to her. Darby watched silently. He had slipped in so quietly that not even Tonkata had noticed that he had entered, and he wasted no time mentally detailing each of the girls' skills and weaknesses, noting which would need more help and which wouldn't, but right now, Omaway seemed to be in the spotlight. Watch the ball, Omaway! Tonkata called again. Yes, sir! She called back, doing her best to focus, but something was getting in the way of her concentration, and it kept wavering. She went to return the ball, but fumbled it, and it bounced out of her hands and onto the court, signalling a break in the game. It was then that Tonkata looked up and saw Darby standing against the wall with his hands in his pockets and grinning from ear to ear. Girls, come in, Tonkata called to his team, halting the practice game so that he could address them all. I have a surprise for you all. The girls whispered curiously amongst themselves as they gathered in a circle around him and he smiled at them all. You lot are a handful, so I've asked an expert to come in and help, he said gruffly, but with a cheeky glint in his eye. So don't think that you can go easy when I'm not here. The girls looked at each other and waited for him to continue. His name is Darby. If you're acquainted with the Nakoma boys volleyball team, you'll recognise him. Darby took that as his cue to enter and he pushed off the wall, walking casually over to the group of girls. A few of the members recognised Darby's name and gasped with fangirl-like excitement, immediately covering their faces when they saw that he was there. And if they don't know my name, they'll know it soon enough. Your man added with a smirk, and half the team nearly fainted on the spot as his turquoise eyes shot through their heart. I'm going to let Darby take over from now to see if he can handle you girls on the court, Tonkata said. He'll be coaching you for the next half of this session, so pay attention. My teaching style's different from yours, Tonkata, Darby said calmly to the older coach, his boss, and then to the girls. Those in blue vests, you're up first. The girls looked at each other and then back at Darby. Um, what did you want us to do? One asked. On court, this side, Darby said firmly. Your serve. He picked up a volleyball from the ball cart and tossed it to the closest girl and then casually walked over to the other side of the net. I'm your opponent, he stated. 
Just you? Another girl asked as the Blue Vest team of four members meandered onto court. Bit cocky, another sniggered. Cocky, huh? Darby asked with a lopsided smirk. He was about to make an obscene reply but stopped himself just in time. Beat me first before you start degrading me or you end up looking like a fool. Poor Darby was having to keep his tongue in check and it had only been five minutes into teaching. The girls on the court looked at each other and then got into formation and the girl at the back tossed the ball up for the serve. Darby eyed her movements and saw her torso twist a little as she reached up to smack the ball across to his side of the net. She's going for a cross shot, he thought, as he quickly worked out her angle and line. As her hand touched the ball, her eyes shifted across the net, giving away exactly where she wanted to place the ball and Darby jumped into its projected path. With another quick glance, he saw that the girls in the front row didn't know their server was going for a cross shot and had left the area on that side open. So it was just a walk in the park to jump up and calmly punch the ball down on the girls' side of the net. It all happened so quickly that no one had time to react and Darby smirked as their jaws dropped and eyes shot to him. Darby wa sugoi desu. Darby is amazing. Kakoi. No, yeah, kakoi. No, kakoi is cool. Where's Seiko? I need your help. Is that correct? Please correct my Japanese. Anyway, next chapter coming tomorrow. I'll see you then.